Today on our show, we got a guest, man. What? Yes, this is a show called Fat Man on Batman. We're predicated on comic books, and we never talk about them today. <laughs> We're talking about comic books, because we got the man who's responsible for the entire young animal line, as well as your entire childhood. Go to a three-shot show us all. Gerard Way. What? Is here on Fat Man on Batman. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Batman. Welcome to Batman. Batman. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Mark Bernard. And look, it's Gerard Way, ladies and gentlemen. It's the leader of the Black Parade. Gerard is not here talking about music today, although Gerard was in this very room, what, two years yeah, ago? Yeah, like two years ago. Two, three years ago, uh, we did this amazing podcast. Um, if, you, if you ever want to hear some ear candy, if you haven't heard it already, we did an episode where we took Welcome to the Black Parade. Uh, him and his brother literally broke it down. Yeah. Like line for line. You know how you listen to music and you go like, oh man, like I always wanted to, I wonder what this means. I wonder what this means. Why did they include that? We turned it into two episodes. I yeah, I think so. <laughs> for a song that, you know, granted it's four minutes and change, maybe three. How yeah. long? I think, I think, well, I used to totally know, but I think it's like four and a half, but so, there's a radio edit that's like that's three and a half, longer. I think. And we turned it into like a multi episode <laughs> podcast, just diving deep into the song. But here we are. This time, once again, in this living room, and now it's the fact that, and we're looking at, see this? What? Go to a, go to a single. See this? Go to, go to Gerard's single. See this? See from all angles. Look at the quotes on the back from the <laughs> fucking famous people and shit, all of whom are approving. This is the first six issues of uh, Gerard's Doom Patrol run. Gerard is... Editing, what do you call it? Overseeing? I'm, I'm, I'm like a, I'm kind of like a, I'm a curator. I'm kind of like a showrunner of all, all young animal. We have two great editors and they do the bulk of the editing. Two great editors. Uh, Molly Mahan mm -hmm. and Jamie Rich. Um, Jamie from Oni. I yes, Jamie Rich yes, Jamie from Oni. Days. That's legit. You got bona fide folks. Uh, young animal is the line of comics that right now is Doom Patrol, Shade the Changing Girl. Girl. Um, Mother Panic. Mother Panic, you co-created? Yes. A uh, brand new character? Yes, with Jody Hauser and Tommy Lee Edwards. And you stuck her, the character in Gotham? Yeah, because it just felt like it'd be a cool place for this character. It was. It started as like a creator own thing in my head, and then I was like, ah, oh, you know. And also it's like, why not? Why yeah. not? Why not own something in Gotham? Yeah, I thought that'd be cool. It's smart. Real estate is really, it's moving. Shoot. <laughs> you can't get any place in Gotham for less than that. Um, and then what's the other? Cave Carson has a cybernetic eye. Genius title. Um, Gerard is deep comics, if you don't know this, but it, you worked in an actual comic book store. I did. I worked in a comic shop when I was about 14, 15. And this is, can you imagine this kid, the kid who worked at the comic book store is this guy now. He's writing Doom Patrol. Were you reading Grant Morrison? I, I know was, you were. I'm not yeah. going to ask you a leading question. No, I was. <laughs> I was reading Grant's and then into Rachel Pollock's run. Mm -hmm. And I had a really cool friend. He was the, my friend Scott, he was the first guy I met in the comic shop. Mm -hmm. And he, um, he turned me on all the really hip stuff, like Flaming Carrot, Doom Patrol, and Reed Opera Fleming, and World's yeah. Toughest Milkman, and things like that. Were you the shirt kid? Did you have all the t-shirts? We were all the shirt kids yes. at the comic book shop. <laughs> I think I was wearing a Watchmen shirt when I met him, and then it just kept, you know, went on from there. Yeah. Um, we talked about it on one of the other podcasts, but tell, tell them what happened to you at the comic book store. Oh, yeah. I actually just talked about this today, too. So there was a robbery, and we were held up at gunpoint, and then I was on the floor, and they put the gun on my head. And, you know, I probably should have been way more scared than I was, but, um, you know, I'm glad I didn't die. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. And then he went had a massive career yeah. in music. And then one day, how did this happen? Uh, that happened because I'd been wanting to do it for a really long time. And um, sometime after Umbrella Academy came out, I met up with Shelley Bond, who is a Vertigo editor who helped me start Young Animal. Mm. And um, we immediately were talking about Doom Patrol. And then kind of back and forth. Uh, it was never the right time because I was always in the band and we were touring everywhere constantly. And I did write like seven pages of it once and sent it off to her. And that was kind of a very cynical version of it. And then years later, when I talked to her again and I talked to Dan Dio and Jim Lee about the imprint, um, I knew I definitely wanted to do Doom Patrol, and, but it felt like it needed some friends with it. It felt like you couldn't just put that out on its own. It right. needed some kind of context. So that's why we came up with the other books. And created a kind of mini universe within yeah, the Yeah, like a mini universe. You know, I'm, I think one of the things we'll probably get to see this year and maybe next year is is some kind of shared universe of some sorts, or at least the books like touching upon each other. You know, one of the things is- That sounds so erotic. Yeah, <laughs> touching upon oh, each other. All the books will be touching on each They're other. They're gonna touch each other. Um, <laughs> Bibli erotica. It is young animal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They do deliver. 
What, who came up with the name? You? I, I did. It was going to be the name of uh, my second solo album, but this was the project I wanted to do instead of making music at the time, so mm -hmm. I just used that name for it. <laughs> um, here's my question. The, uh, when, when you walk in and you're like, I want to write Doom Patrol, naturally I'm sure they're like, yay. But when you're like, I want to write Doom Patrol and can I have three other books that are attached to it that I'm going to oversee, but you've got to put creative teams on it. What do they say at that moment? Yes, oh my God, that's just more books. Well, it was like, it, it was just really kind of natural. You know, uh, I've been friends with Jim Lee for years. Like he was there like in England with his wife and and we were playing Black Parade and, you know, we've been friends and I met Dan and Dion, I really liked him. Mm. And so uh, we had, there was this convention in South America and we were all there. And uh, we just ended up having dinner like multiple nights in a row and all talking. And I got to have dinner with Frank Miller and it was really cool. And um, Gabrielle and Fabio were there and it was just a good time. So we came back and I feel like it was less than a week later we were sitting talking about what to do next. And when, was, at what point does your inner child stop constant. screaming, dude? It doesn't like, stop. You served the inner child that was like, man, it'd be nice to be a rock star. And now you're serving the inner child that's like, man, it'd be nice to be the guy that writes these books instead yeah. of selling them. Yeah. But you did it with Umbrella Academy. It's not did, even like yeah, your yeah. first day at the races and stuff. So right. you, you got to taste, you put your foot in deep. Because it's not like Umbrella Academy is like, hey, it's a one shot. You're like, it, you, it went on. You had a life to that. And what was the other book? Uh, Dallas was the second part of uh, Umbrella Academy. And then there was The True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys. That's it, Killjoys. That I co wrote with Sean Simon, and who now does tons of books. And, you know, he's uh, he did Art Ops with Mike Allred. Mm -hmm. And he's just a really talented writer and great friend. Um, you are entrenched in comics world and Man. have been yes. forever at this point. Yes. Um, what is the ultimate dream? Obviously, this is a dream come true because you're working on, you loved his book and you get to, yeah. that's why I worked on Daredevil. I loved Frank Miller's run and I was like, I, I'll never be able to do it, but let me play in that universe. You know, I, I don't really have like a lot of bucket list things left. Like this is kind of, <laughs> yeah, you know, this you're, was, you're scraping the bottom of the bucket yeah, where you're like, like, I've done literally I, everything I want to do. I'd like to ride a unicorn, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, so. you and also I imagine you got the freedom when you do if you do crossovers, when you do crossovers that you'll get to play with I'll let you play with any character you want at this point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's cool. There is like a there is so like not Wonder Woman, not this Yeah, week. there's characters that <laughs> next week you got Wonder Woman. I couldn't really dream of going near and I think that's good. Like part of what I was hoping to to bring with the imprint to DC was like this ability to kind of take some lesser known characters or like D-list characters are just characters that haven't been around since the 60s and do something with them, you know? Mm. So I think it's kind of one of my, you know, my role there. Did you about. talk about the, the uh, fourth, any forthcoming books? I don't want to spoil anything that I, that I know, that we talked about before the show began. But. Well, all, all of them are like any future books. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're all like, we're developing them right now. Um, me and the editors are kind of doing that and we're getting approvals and seeing where things go. Like, I don't know when we'll make announcements on stuff, but we do have Bug, which is the first uh, six issue miniseries for Young Animal by the Allred family. That's, that's what I was, I, yeah. that was the one I was yeah, doing yeah. for. So, yeah, that's oh, so it's, it's Mike and Laura? Mike, Lee, Laura, yeah. Lee writes it, Lee's his brother, I think younger brother. And then Mike draws it and Laura colors it. Oh my lord, that's yeah. adorable. Yeah, it's awesome. And it's it's the Kirby character, it's Forager? Yes, it's Forager. I remember Forger. him from Cosmic Goddess. Forger, that was yes, my most yes. interaction with that character. In that first page in issue one, there's actually a couple callbacks to Cosmic Goddessy panels. Oh my god, yeah, you're so. going deep cuts. Yeah, he, well, the Allred family goes very deep, deep cuts for them. So, What have you done with them so far? Did they do anything? thus far with you I, did i see you in connection with them have they done artwork? i've just been a fan for years and i am i wrote like uh an afterword but it would it, what was it called in rim rocket seven i wrote like kind of an afterword to that it was like the encore or something it was called something music related and i'd been a fan for years and i did that and he did this illustration of me in the band which he gifted to me after that and so i've i've always wanted to work with him so now we get to. I did. Uh, uh, he designed Blunt Man and Chronics. Oh, he did. He did when he did uh, Chasing Amy. He's in the opening of Chasing Amy and stuff. And he actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. I remember his scene. Yeah. He has like, it's like a cut to, and it's him delivering a line. He goes, "It's like I just don't see. I like somebody, some actor. He goes, I just don't see him playing Madman. Oh yeah. <laughs> I forget who the actor was. Um, uh, all right. So I'm, I've been talking mm. fucking Blue Streak. Dive in. Tell me how you sort of put together the teams for, for these books. Like, what were you looking for building really the creative Oh, the creative teams? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, well, I was looking for 
It, I was looking for people that really wanted to do something different, really wanted to tell human stories. I think that was important. Um, and 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 that was like the main thing, like people that- You got a Brian Boland cover. Yes, that was pretty amazing. <laughs> oh um, people that kind of understood the world we were gonna share and create together. Mm -hmm. um, just people with great ideas, you know, that was a big part of it. And people that would really care about these books as if they were their creator own books, which is kind of a unique thing with Young Animal. All the creators feel, I, I feel it's like all there's, creator owned? no, 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 but it's, you know, the kind yeah, of work, the yeah, the kind of work people are doing on these, it's very personal to them, you know? Because they like the characters, they go back with them? Or? Yeah, they go back with them, and in the case of Jody Hauser, she co-created Mother Panic, so that's partly hers as well, and, and, you know, they either go back with the characters' runs, if not the first runs, like the 90s runs, like Milligan doing Shade and mm. things like that. That um, makes my blood rush. So, <laughs> that, yeah. That was my era, dude, that's where I was knee-deep in it, and mm -hmm. stuff. And the era of bittersweet lead that I like left behind when I got busy doing something else. And you saw the stack of comics next to you. First, it started as a stack of comics on your desk. I got to read these next, this <laughs> week. And then the pile would get bigger and bigger. And then the pile moved to the floor and then was as tall as the desk. And I realized I'm never going to read these, am I? Like, it's over. I'm not caught up. I'm lost at this point. <laughs> but with something like Young Animal and something like this book, which comes out tomorrow, Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, that you jump on at this point because this is the first six issues of your story. Yes, that's correct? the first six. That's the first chapter. And so you, they're going to be releasing the first six of the other three titles as well, I believe. Uh, yeah, and they, and they come out. Um, I think July is. Um, uh, I, I know Shade is in August, so July I believe Mother Panic and Cape Carson. What's harder, writing a song, writing a comic? Um, writing a comic. Why? Um, and it's longer. I think writing, <laughs> yeah. I think writing in general, like, is just this, like, you start to kind of understand why people have such a hard time with it when you really sit down to seriously do it mm. all, all the time. And, you know, it's a solitary thing. It's kind of alienating, like, I mean, uh, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I've gone Jesus. You know, look at me. <laughs> oh, I, I remember Warren Jesus. Ellis talking about the way he writes. He writes comics, especially single issues, as if they're songs, as if oh. they're rock songs. Like for him, it's very rhythmic. It's very yeah, like verse, yeah. chorus, verse, chorus, uh -huh. B section, like something big is about to happen and then a little bit of Daniel Mott to set up the next song. That's like, awesome. I, I totally see that. Yeah, I could see it being like that. I, the times where I was really hitting a wall, I would kind of rely on the skills I had learned as a songwriter and make things very lyrical. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's cool that other people are, you know, have been doing that. And as also well. with these cats, like you get yeah. to, you get to actually bend reality. So yeah. the, number one is a comic. Cool. So it's like, ah, you can't, you can, you can't write yourself into a corner because somebody could always burst through a wall. It's very true. <laughs> but yeah. with Duke Jobs particularly, you get characters that aren't even like, ah, it's a Justice League, and they all get superpowers and they act a certain way. Yeah. They have superpowers and act in a certain way, but these characters are far flung from the beaten path. Yeah. So that means like, you know, as you're sitting there writing, if you're like, oh my God, what do I do? You could just do the most fucking outlandish thing, and they're like, well, that's Doom Patrol. Yeah, and sometimes <laughs> it's kind of what you have to do. You know, I, this was an amazing learning experience. And my, my partner on the book, Nick Darrington, um, he's just been so amazing, so hardworking. You know, Tamara Bond villain is the colorist and she's just done an amazing job. Todd Klein just lettering like, we, you know, it really is like this unique team and everybody has a different kind of role in operation. And it's kind of like Tamara kind of comes at the end real fast and just colors everything, right. you know? It w which feels like she doesn't sleep for like like 48 hours or so. <laughs> She's waiting on you. And we just keep getting pages from her. And um, and Nick, really, he just grinds constantly drawing. And, you know, I'm not the fastest scripter. And he can pencil pretty fast. And then when we when we have Tom come in, Tom Fowler to cover inks, it's, it's cool, too, because he's great. You know, he captures Nick's pencils really well. But, you know, Nick has been like, we definitely share a brain. And he's an amazing guy. And I'm really glad to have met him. There are a lot of, uh, I couldn't help but notice, there are a lot of female creators that you have sort of working on the line. Mm -hmm. Another good question. Was that by design? Was that a happy accident? Was that just the people who had the best ideas won? Um, I mean, you know, people often say, you know, like the, the best ideas usually win, but at the same time, I think perspective could win out too. You know, mm -hmm. not only did we want people that were, I mean, you know, number one, like they're absolutely the most talented people to be writing those two books, mm -hmm. but they also have a woman's perspective, which both of those books really needed, especially like, you know, Shade is a 15, well, she's a 20 something and a 
16 year old girl's body like i don't know how to write that you know <laughs> i mean i can fake it I, I might do okay but there's a version that can be written but yeah. it ain't suitable for there's a comic. version but like cecil castellucci her writing is is uh like that's kind of her world like ya fiction mm. and um you know comics and things like she did this great book called the plain janes with jim rugg way mm. back when minx mm. was an imprint that shelly bond created at dc and so she had you know so cecil has this real history with writing those kinds of stories and really capturing kind of like the uh, the aggression and the angst of, of those years, you know? You know what's fucking amazing, dude, is you you walk the walk, but you absolutely talk the talk. Like, you can fucking, you, you know comics. I love, I, I, you know, you'd be surprised. I don't know a lot of, like, super deep comic knowledge. But you just, you can drop names of people that worked on books and imprints oh, yeah. that have been around in a minute where I'm like, oh shit, I, I guess so, that. yeah, I guess, I, yeah, I guess I, uh, yeah. I'm really horrible with names too, though, so. Oh, Not and, today. Like, yeah, I know, today I'm, I'm, I'm doing great. You're uh, a comic book fan and a comic book reader. Yes. When one becomes a comic book writer, what happens to the reading? Yeah, the reading kind of goes away. Do you ever feast before you dive into yours? Like I, what was I working on? I was working on a show a w, uh, Warner Brothers animation thing, which they haven't announced yet. But before I would sit down to write, I would watch Rick and Morty. Cause I was like, not cause I'm like, I gotta make it like Rick and Morty, but I'm like, right. if th this is, this makes my, this is creatively fertile. This makes yeah, me yeah, go yeah. like, holy shit. Like that, if that's possible, what else is possible? It is very creative. For is there something that you like to read um, before you dive into? Well, this is actually what I do. If, 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 if a few years have gone by since I last wrote a comic and I'm kind of re-engaging, I'll go to the comic shop. And I'll just kind of get everything that looks cool out there, and I'll make sure I don't do anything like those. <laughs> <laughs> but and, you know, I like to know what exists out there for people. You know, um, so and and I end up, you know, like Bulletproof Coffin. I found that way. I was like, well, this looks really good, and and I love the book. You know, um, so uh, so I like to do that. I like to kind of see what's out there and and what I would like to see that's missing. You know, because some people sometimes they're making really great stuff that you wanted to see. I follow you on Instagram and mm -hmm. you have uh, one of those accounts where you'll put up, it's very artistic. You put up like, oh, yeah. here's an image of a color. Here's an image of a cup. Here's oh a yeah, I remember when we were talking about that. <laughs> it's crazy. I like, haven't you, done those in a while. But you, uh, what, you don't do the normal like, you yeah, know, no. And look at this famous fucker. Like it's <laughs> it's artsy. Yeah, I like and not it, off puttingly yeah. artsy where it's just like, oh man, this is too high brow for me. Maybe but not, yeah. It's it's no, it's not at all. It's really quite beautiful. And you can draw. I, I can draw, yes. I did go to school of visual arts and I did graduate. To SVA. SVA, yeah. What um what is is there ever a moment where you're like, I wonder if I could do an interior? Or even a cover. I've done covers. Have you done covers? Yes, I've done covers. Uh, I did a Killjoys cover. Nothing for this yet. Um, I think I was so busy with the script that nobody even suggested it to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can't finish the yeah. fucking script. Right? I can give so him another like, job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, this guy's got enough going on with his brain. Can um, you can you listen to music when you write? Ah, uh, I'm so glad you asked that because uh, I talk about this all the time. <laughs> I can listen to music, and I could listen to pretty much any music, but recently I've stopped listening to music with lyrics. Hmm. I, I know a lot of people that write. In general or just when you write? Um, in general, mostly, um, but when I write, almost always, you know, and I wish I could remember half the stuff, but. Are they like soundtracks, or orchestral pieces? No, it's, it's like a, uh, sound recordings. Hmm. Uh, Jana Winderin, um, I love. She does these really crazy sound recordings where I believe she'll like go to the Arctic, and she'll just kind of record the sound of that. And so it's like white noise? You listen to like that? Kind of, yeah. It's like kind of really textured, interesting white noise. What does it do? Oh my um, God, this is like talking weed. It's no. Like, what does it do? <laughs> it really, not only, it helps me focus. It's like a, we, uh, my friend Jamie, he calls them brain cleansers. Yeah. yeah. And there's this, uh, Robert Thurman has this record called Flux. And it's just tape loops. And it really does clean your brain in some Ooh, weird way. It's called Flux. Flux. That one's Flux. But Jana Winderin is like... I listen to her albums constantly. Um, Energy Sphere, um, Out of View. She has some really great stuff. Just sound recordings. I mean, I'm sure she does something to them. How awesome, man. I'm taking yeah. that. That's a you trip. have to check them out. They're really amazing. There is a one hour long loop on YouTube just of the Enterprise Bridge noise. Oh, cool. That's cool. It's just literally just. <laughs> <laughs> People are so wonderfully fucked up. They're like, I'm sorry, that's how I work. This is what it's I need. That's how I work or that's how I come. Either way, an hour of Star Trek bridge noise is going to get me where I'm I need to, to go. I'm trying, I want to like go into my thing. So that I, deep? Let's I just want to tell you what, you know, there's some really 
cool stuff. I was listening to the monkeys. <laughs> without lyrics? For reference. You're like, that shit's what? deep. Why don't you take, hey, hey, we're the monkeys. Monkeys without lyrics. You're on a journey, man. Monkeys it's like without Garfield lyrics. without Garfield. <laughs> Gerard, um, aside from doing like an insanely ah, successful Jeff German. career, Jeff German. that's what we're looking for? Yeah, J-E-P-H. J-E-R-M-A-N. I think what he does, he does these recordings where he'll take like a, he'll take like a, a recording device and like hang it on telephone wires or like some kind of cables and get the vibrations from. So like some Ben Birdie shit. From, from the highway <laughs> far away. Yeah, probably a little bit like that. Yeah, exactly. Because that's how they go. Yeah. All right, you do to him or not? Mm-hmm. Um, aside from my... Chemical romance and whatnot. I, I turned. I asked uh, one day, very, very like simply, and, and not thinking he'd do it, but uh, asked Gerard to record a song for the end of Tusk. Oh yeah. Which is like, like one of my favorite things in the fucking world. Um, there's a song. What, what was I mean? The water is wide. The water is wide. But yeah. we call. But it's a. It's based on. Oh, I don't know the official title. Yeah, there was some old. Oh, Wally Wally. Is that it? That's bang. it. <laughs> so I wanted to do the water is wide. But you would have had to pay for it. But it was based on Oh Wally Wally. So they were like, just go back to the source. So Gerard did that and then went even a step further and composed his own. And the history of that song is such that someone adds lyrics, someone adds, yeah. it expands. So it was actually kind of cool what he did. Yeah. But it is hauntingly fucking beautiful, more beautiful, dogs all over them, <laughs> more beautiful than that movie has a right. <laughs> to c- c- conclude, <laughs> it, it felt like when I put it on the movie, I was like, "That's it's such a beautiful song, and it's being killed by this <laughs> this rubber wall we're backing up with these horrible noises." And then, like this lyrical angel comes in and sings this like heartbreaking like love song. One of the only, and granted, I'm close to it because I, I love the movie and stuff, but one of the only like love songs that truly will make my eyes well. It's and, and not because of the lyrics. But you put into uh, that one moment where you're like, uh, to love a, uh, to love a girl that breaks my. Oh heart. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, it was fucking perfect. It was so perfect. Yeah. And we threw it in that flick. I was like, <gasps> we're gonna win an Oscar. Nobody did, but he should have for that fucking song. I thought so that movie shines. was fucking awesome. It's a weird movie. I could not That's believe. Artsy. Like I, that made I, me feel cool artsy. I, for yeah, it was life. your artsy. That was my I, artsy. I could not believe it existed after I watched it. <laughs> I could not believe it. Me neither. I made it. That was there every step of the way, and I still can't fucking believe it. But that was that. That was like me trying to be artsy and stuff like that. That's That's why it was so awesome to have you involved, too, because I was like, he's artsy. It was fun. He'll vouch for it. I remember it ending. I was watching it in your office, and then it ended, and it held on that shot where the song would have been, and I was like, I have to do this. (laughs) (laughs) This movie's fucking crazy. Big black spot. <laughs> He's like, I've been tra- I, I don't want to do my career anymore. This would be the perfect way to end it. <laughs> Go out with this walrus song. Yeah. I want to get to comics as quickly mm-hmm. as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to ask the music or comics because they both seem uh, horses of the same uh, color. Mm-hmm. But which is a more visually interesting world to be in? Now, mm-hmm. think before you answer because right. your videos and your concerts, like it wasn't just like, hey, we showed up and we sang. There was a presentational uh, event. Yeah, that's true. Thing. So that's true. What, and, but this is a world of I'm writing and then it's going to turn into pictures so yes. you are surrounded by visuals, which is more visual. Um, now I'm just trying to have smart Mark Bernard. <laughs> they're, you got this. Mm, well, they're both narrative to me. They're both very narrow. The visual language of both music and comics are are that way. But I, they're they're both so strong in different ways. Like something that you could you can't really do in music. In music, you can conjure an image in somebody's head, or you can dress yourself up a certain way and then convey an image as well. And you can have stuff running behind you. But in comics, you can you can create an image and put a certain combination of words on that to create something happening in your brain. You know, and you, you can't do that with music. Mm. Um, so, so at times, yeah, they just have different strengths. A comic, comic can be super impactful visually um, and to what it's doing in your brain, but you know, so can music. When you guys, when did you realize, hey, we're gonna make this a visually interesting band presentation as opposed to just we're gonna jam? I think it's because of my comic background. I think it was a matter of time. And I, I, I think if I didn't, you know, if the guys weren't so as cool as to let me do that stuff with the band, I think I would've went crazy. Really? I would've been so bored of like, just being in like t-shirt and jeans, like rocking out. What, why, but he, I'm, I, yeah. I'm so happy you did, but why? <laughs> why, like, did you feel like, these fucking songs are too good? 
Like, like why are know, we going to wear jeans and T-shirts? Let's fucking dress it, up. It was, there was some of that for sure. But again, it was like, it didn't exist at that point. Now, there have been a lot of people, like, for many years doing that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Alice Cooper and David Bowie and... You know, there was but a window where it was happening. I wanted to see that. I was like, how come nobody does this anymore? And I was like, cool, we can do it or we'll do it, you know? And uh, that was so, again, it goes back to like, let me see what's out here. And then you're just like, mm, nothing that I really want. So then, you know. Um, I, I want to do that. Let's do it. Seems to be the mantra of your fucking life. We can do that. Yeah, we can do that. Do you Let's think do that's it. the jersey in and you? Collaboratively, like that's been, you know, uh, the amazing thing about all the projects, you know, going back from the band is like you get to work and make art with people and collaborate together. And, and it's, it's just amazing. Like everybody on Young Animal, like we do, you know, collaborate more so in the beginning, you know, because everybody's just in their own world now and they're doing it. And that's all I ever wanted for Young Animal. Like you have Jody Hauser doing amazing things with Mother Panic. And, um, and it's, hers is such a different book than the others of Young Animal. And I think that's why it's so important to be on Young Animal. And then you have John Rivera, who is, he, he's my buddy from art school. From and, SVA? Yeah, from SVA. We met in comedy writing class. And uh, we were the only two people who made each other laugh. And it was, <laughs> you know, and then we became really close friends and stayed in touch. But he's a comic artist, writer, and I knew he was going to understand Cave Carson. I just knew it. Like, I, I had a book in my head, and I was like, John will get it. I don't know if anybody else will get this. <laughs> <laughs> How is the book received on the home front? Amazing. Your lady is artsy farts. Yes, uh, she's got an art show June 11th. I went to her art show at uh, at uh, La Luz de Jesus um, Soap Factory, and she was, oh, yeah. and she did she did this piece which I bought and is in Harley's room now. Uh, she took her old journal pieces. Yeah, it was really amazing. Like, oh my god, it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I, that's why I had to buy them. And there was one you're talking. She took her old journal pieces, and then she did art on top of them. So like the one journal page with the art on it that I bought was her going like, I'm, I must be a star or something like that. <laughs> like all the confidence of, of teenage youth and angst going like, this will happen. And she did. So it's like kind of like wonderfully self yeah. so. so how does she react to the whole thing? Was she comics back She loves it. She was, uh, no, it's, well, she got into comics through 8-Ball mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. kind of her kind of comics. Right, I right. think she likes the real artsy kind of great, and they're great books too. I'm a big fan of that stuff too, Dan Klaus, mm -hmm. you know, and everything. Um, but, you know, that, that's kind of her experience with comics has been those books. And then, um, you know, she started reading mine and she obviously is a big supporter and she loves them. And, but, you know, she's, she was really psyched on this one. I think she was most uh, excited about Jane showing up. Mm -hmm. I think that was a character that I, I, I had a feeling she was going to like her. I, I think some, in some small ways I, I kind of proudly based some of her on Lindsay, so. Smart man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Smart man, then you're like, read this. Do you like it? Um, is there a feeling when you're, when you're running an imprint like that, it, it seems to be a little bit like running a band, you know, in that like assembling people who all have a yes. skill and a talent or Absolutely. whatever, you get to be like lead singer or orchestrator. Right, right, right. Is that, was that part of the initiative behind Young Animal? Like once you had left, my chemical romance. Like, oh, I, um, I, kinda, I don't know that. You, well, I don't know that they were related, but it definitely, you know, uh, it definitely gave me kind of the skills or the ability to be able to to recognize when I felt like something was like, oh, this is perfect for what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Like this person gets it, you know. Um, and that's that is what you do when you're starting a band. You, you're like you, you know, you look at your friends or maybe people you don't know, and you say, who gets it? Like I get it. Who gets it the same way as I do? Um, and so that did carry right over into Young Animal. Did you ever direct one of the videos? I did, one and a half. I, well, I, I directed the trailer that came out for Killjoys. I co-directed um, Na Na Na, and I co-directed Thing. Um, do you ever want to direct a feature? You're one of those cats you know, who do that. You know, it's weird. You I, got a good eye. Well, like, you invited really me to the one. set that time. Thank you. And I said, like, come watch. I had a blast. Like, that was that was my first time being able to watch, like, a film being shot. And it was really cool. Well, I from the shoot the music videos. Yeah. Really talking. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was just an amazing experience. And I was like, I don't know if I'm ready for this. <laughs> I don't know. You are, dude. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's like, it seems like that's what it's building toward. Like, you've got public performance down to science, and now you've got storytelling, you got storytelling there down to science, storytelling here down to science. Yeah. You have directed music video. Yeah. Combine them all together. Like I think, I think, yeah, I think eventually that would be something, you know, I'd be really interested in. Um, what would it take? What if they were like, you know what? We got a hundred million, we'll let you do Doom Patrol the movie. 
I would totally do it. Done, right? <laughs> I was going to say, don't ever be like, nah, I haven't done enough. Just I would this. 100%. I will say Even this now. Even if they were now. like 50 million. Even though I, I like comics is really one of my, I have two mediums that I love and it's comics and music and, mm. and writing falls into the middle of those. Um, but I would definitely do that in a heartbeat. But if I could get everybody on the creative team of the comic to work on it with me. In a world where they're like, here's 100 million. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sure that's a small ask. If we get all. These are dudes working for 150 bucks a page. They will happily <laughs> show <laughs> You could break off a lot. Yeah, we could have like Nick creating all the concept art. We could have Tamara um, guiding, doing color guides for everybody. Be like, no, they have to be kind of like real nuts how they did Watchmen, where they I think they had they were basing colors off direct panels. It looked like yeah, yeah. that that, that movie Zach was, fetishizes yeah, that book. He was really into getting it super accurate for mm -hmm. that movie. And he threw in I, where was it? BBS? I think there's still references to Watchmen. There was a Who Watches the Watchmen. I think. Oh really? Scribbled somewhere. Was it in Latin? I think, I think it was. Ipsu, what is it? Quip, quips, Ipsu. Uh, I used to know it at one point. That's how hardcore I was. Did you ever buy, remember the Dave Gibbons that like DC uh, put out the Watchmen covers in black and white and you could frame them suitable for framing? I know what you're talking about. I never had that. I bought them on a secondary market when I got some money one day. I could never afford them when I was a true fan. But after Clerks came out, I was like, I want them. But and I, I, bought them I did them. have the West End Games RPG source book. Of Watchmen? Of Watchmen. Oh, wow. that, was a, that was a very popular and expensive yes, book at one point. It was, Wall book. yes. And I lost it, unfortunately. <gasps> I know. Could you believe it? I lost that book? I bought it in the and store even, for the price it was. How do you fucking lose a comic? I don't know. Well, it's like a, it's a pretty thick. Yeah. I mean, I, I moved around some. You know, no, I lost this like years ago. I probably lost it in a relationship or something. <laughs> <laughs> Is it your rosebud? Do you like fucking fall asleep in that? Well, like, I've retained, I retained almost all the information from it because I read it a million times. Oh my and God, that's hard. Alan Moore <laughs> and Dave Gibbons had something to do with that book. Yeah. And there's information about like silhouette that you would never get in the comic. Like there's information about all of them. And it's like, you know, if, if you can find one. It's almost extended universe. It's, it's, and it's from, from the masters, from the guys. That yes, the from tips. the people that made the thing. Deep so, it's like yeah. DVD bonus material for a comic It book. is. It is. It's <laughs> the first, it was my first experience with bonus material. <laughs> what book did I see recently I fell in love with? I think it was um, Graffiti might have done it. They did a Dark Knight book that was sourced to the original pages. Oh, wow. And so some of the, the I think of all the pages you know, let's say 10 to 20 are, they had to reproduce from, you know, within house. But the rest, it was this massive project where they tracked down through collectors, people that had bought pages, original artwork to wow. Dark Return and put out this gigantic honking fucking book. Mm -hmm. It is a gorgeous book DC. Book. I have to get, I saw somebody on Instagram with that and I was like, I have to get this. <laughs> it's I, a must to, have book. I have to get the Miller, Mazzuccelli, Daredevil, they Born again, mm. the big one. What do you mean they did? They did one years ago. I missed IDW out. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Oversized? Yeah, like, like the, the comic the page pages? size. Yeah, mm. the Massacelli pages. You're a fucking. You're, you got a lot of useful information. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, are you serious? Yeah, that's out there. there going? Like, it was one of the early ones they did. Yeah, people. I know. Like I've been. It's one of those things that I, like every once in a while I'll go look at on eBay and be like, I should get this. Right, and you're, and it's not where you're like, I need to own things, but it's like, oh my god, like if it doesn't get bought someone won't think to make another one one day. I saw that whenever I'm in a store and I see like DC stuff, I'm always like, I'm gonna buy it. And even if it's like kitty stuff, and Jennifer's like, why? I'm like, because they made it. And if nobody <laughs> buys it, they won't make it again. This is a Black Manta doll. <laughs> like nobody was making that when I was a child. Please back my play on this. Um, the books are called uh, young, DC's Young Animal Line. This is the book you could buy Tomorrow. Don't growl. We're almost done. 6-6. Six, six. Hmm. Uh, what is it? 6-6. Six, six. June 6th. Oh, is it? Tuesday, June 6th. And six. it's also the first 6 At 6 p.m. Six. Six. That's three sixes then. Oh, shit. That makes the three. Man, man, what? Man, man, man. The best part of comics is when they go satanic. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite comic? I mean, obviously a big Doom Patrol fan, mm. but back when you were working the shop, what was the one that you would recommend to everybody? What was your religion? Oh, I'm trying to, I got really into The Crow at one point. Ooh. And I'm still From the beginning? The like from the... Yeah, like... Like when it first yeah. hit the newsstand. Yeah, well, I, I like... James uh, O'Barr, old like school. Second print. Within the... About, Okay. Yeah, so I missed it was the like, first. Hey, this print. is a hot book. Um, Back I, when it was in. I had a lot pencil. of favorites, but yeah, it, uh, man, that blew me away. Like the crow is. The movie's like, wonderful, but that book was. I, I remember buying that book. It was Caliber. Yeah, Caliber. Book. I have the Buying it off a rack and being like, <gasps> they, 
they killed her. Yeah, the first appearance is in one of those Caliber Presents. Yeah, Caliber, Caliber Presents with a Tim Vigil cover. Yes! <laughs> did you collect um, Faust? Faust? Yeah, I, I sure did. I was 14. <laughs> <laughs> there were dicks in it. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think, what were the other big titles of that moment, man? Oh my God, we were collecting. I mean, obviously, yeah, there was Doom. And then I'm trying to think of what I, I was role playing a lot. I was playing a lot of RPGs. So, and, and it's not beyond um, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. It sounds like you were playing like. Yeah, we were playing everything. Really? Yeah, and I have to Did they do that in the store? Because, uh, yeah, we did it in the store. And the store wasn't big. Like, what was the store called? Uh, Metropolis Comics. Long gone? Uh, yes, long gone. Long gone. But we're still friends. And, you know, I talked to those guys. We had a get together. Uh, a year and a half ago, we all got together. <laughs> and did you RPG it? Um, we did not. No. <laughs> what the fuck? This opportunity. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you gotta but make they're, in the, they're in the book. What do you mean? Explain. Like, me. the shop is in the book. Oh, my God. How awesome are you? I just really, it really transformed me, you know, that experience. No doubt. So there you go. And that's Chris. He passed away of cancer last year. You're going to make me and cry. We, we put him in, I put him behind the counter and then, you know, there's Scott, <laughs> Pat, Dana. And uh, so I wanted that to be the nerve center of Danny because that's kind of the nerve center where I met of Danny. Danny the street? Uh, yeah, Danny the street, yeah. That's where I met Danny, was in that place. In this comic shop? In that comic shop. So what did you do? Give the artist here his pictures? Pat, the owner, he had photos. Wow. Stop he, it. And he had actually, a, he had like something that he must have made, uh, uh, like a infographic of it or a 3D. Yeah, yeah. He had made something like that, and he was like, "This is what it looked like," and it was exact. So that's exactly what. Even the the uh, air conditioner. And look at it as a <laughs> window unit put in the yeah, wall. Yeah, yeah, so that's what it was. Anybody who so do you run into in life since the days of Metropolis? Mm -hmm. and that was called? Yes. Have you ever run into people like you used to send me my comics? No, I, I don't. I don't think so. Would, um, so would there be people that would recognize this? I don't feel like we. Yet? I don't feel like we sold a lot of comics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. You know, Pat, the owner, he was amazing. He tolerated all of us, and I really don't feel like we sold a lot of. <laughs> He's like, I just want some friends. I feel I like need to play players for RPGs. There's a lot of dudes in there, like playing, you know, rifts and stuff. <laughs> what is so? If if would somebody who went there be like, holy shit, like how deep was uh, it? I, that's deep. I, I don't. I think only the people that were attached to the place. How fucking like adorable that. is that, man? Yeah. You're doing it right, goddammit. <laughs> Memorializing all that brought you to comics in the pages of a comic. It was, you know, it was an important scene and it was an important book to me, and that scene led me to comics. Recapturing well, youth. Yeah. Led, uh, led me to Doom Patrol. Led you to Doom Patrol. Yeah. Um, did, uh, have you. Do you, are you, you must have met many times over the years, Grant Morrison? Yes, we. When you told him I'm diving in, did he give you any advice? He, he did, he said, um, he said, find the new weird. And that That's was the advice. best advice. He that was is. like, the stuff I was doing 20 years ago, that yeah. was really weird at the time. And he's like, a lot of that stuff isn't, is mainstream now. So he's like, you have to find the new weird. Oh my so God. I just. Sure. Excellent. Started to do that and I discovered inflation and all these other pretty amazing things that I'd never heard of before. You know. That's also a great t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Find the new weird. And, and, a, and a words to live by in um, every aspect of life. Yeah, he, he's been amazingly supportive. Um, I know how personal Doom Patrol is to him and, I, and, and certain characters like Danny the Street, um, you know, really important to him. And uh, so I made sure to ask him questions when I needed to, like, hey, where's Danny from? And I'm not telling anybody, but. Yeah. You're, you are, you're not only a great creator, but a great fan. I am a, yeah, if I like something, I'm really, I try to be good to the thing that's good to me, so. <gasps> Put that on a fucking <laughs> shirt. No wonder you were writing hit songs and shit. You just throw out these little bomb bows. I gotta try to be good to that, which is good to me. I mean, that's one of the great things about comics is that at least the dudes who do it right, realize that I've worked on this book, I created this book, and somebody will do it after me. Like mm -hmm. the lineage of comics. Yeah. And the sort of goodwill to the guys taking over after you. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of wonderful. It's, it is, it is, and I'm so glad you brought that up. There's like this kind of, sometimes, in the best case scenario, this is kind of unspoken camaraderie that happens where like, I'm excited to one day pass this over to somebody else. I would I would love it to be seamless. Or mm. I, and, and even if they're doing something radically different, like, um, like I, I think Paul Kupperberg helped Grant get into his run. Grant had asked, he had some requests for, 
for Paul. Mm. And he had said, uh, I, could you do this? Could you kill this character? Could you? And he set him up for his run. For when he jumped in. When he jumped in. And I would be glad to do that for another writer. Um, the, the wheel of comics continues to turn mm -hmm. as it was done for you. So you could do it for somebody else. Mm -hmm. uh, the book is out. If you're re watching this on Monday, tomorrow, if you're watching this any day, uh, Monday or Tuesday, it's out now. Let's just, fucking, <laughs> let's just make it short. Go buy it. First six issues. I'm going to dive in, dude. I'm going to keep this. They said I could keep oh, it. Oh, yeah. They also brought us uh, uh, towels oh, that yeah. look like this. Flexman towels. Flexman mm. towels. Here of the beach towels. <laughs> um, you are living the goddamn dream. I really dude. am. And you're doing us proud, too. It's not just like you're living the dream and you're burning it in your wake and being like, ha ha, I fucked the dream. You're doing it right. Thank you're you. You're honoring it. And, and I'm trying. Oh, you've got a good heart. I'm trying. Thank you. Young Animal Line, Gerard Way. He's in comics. He's in your head and heart. <laughs> He'll carry on. He'll carry on. <laughs> I was waiting for you to jump in. He's not going to do it. He's like, I don't fucking sing unless I'm paid, Smith. <laughs> He's like, oh, I I'm, believe I'm, I've said that before. Not, <laughs> not to you, but I have said that before. Um, thank you, uh, Gerard Way, for coming on today. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Fantastic fucking job. Um, uh, for Fat Man on Batman, I've been Kevin Smith. I've been Mark Bernard. And he's been... Gerard Way. Uh, come back next episode and see at least two of us. <laughs> same fat time, same fat channel. Smodcast.com or YouTube.com slash Kevin Smith. Do Patrol! Okay, so one thing I had to clarify is that West End Games did not make the Watchmen supplement. For the RPG, it was Mayfair Games. I remembered it as we finished the podcast. I want everybody to know that I got my shit in order and I know who makes it. How how adorable is that? <laughs> he wanted you to know for sure that he knew that Mayfair did that. And what? West End does the Star Wars game. And he wanted he did. you to and know it was that. One of the, but yeah, that was a good game. They're both good games. If you were sitting out there and you were about to type in the comments section, he don't know shit about RPG, you literally had to just pull your fingers away from the keyboard, <laughs> didn't you? Well done, dude. This has been For the Record with Gerard Way. <laughs> <laughs>